Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. Today we will continue and wrap up our series on the so-called final reports. In the previous videos, we have talked about how the data is being generated and how it is transferred to these big text files. Now, the only thing that remains that to transform these big text files for the, for us, well-known format of the Pling pad and map files or binary pad and map files or anything that we could use with ease for our follow-up purposes and follow-up computations. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Here we are again in R, which we will use to transform our final reports to the desired format. I want to underline that the method that I'm showing to you here is one of the possibilities, but of course there are many other possibilities that you could use. Also, R is not being known as one of the most memory efficient software. So if you need to transform really large final reports, I perhaps suggest to you to look into other means of, of doing so, perhaps with the Linux command line or awk or any other possibility that deals with large files with ease. But again, to be very honest with you, I'm using the script that I'm going to show you. And basically I just find a big enough computer and just brute force it through. So our plan is very simple. The final report itself is one line for one SNP for one individual. And this is already very close to the format, the Plink format, which is called the Elgen file. Here, each line has five columns. First one is the family ID, second one is the individual ID or the within family ID, third one is the SNP name, and the fourth and the fifth are basically the two alleles of the SNP. Because columns two to five are already present in the final report, it is very easy to create this file. And if you want to load the Elgen files with Plink, then you also need a thumb file. This is a file where we have each line for one individual, First column is family ID, individual ID, father, mother, sex code, and a phenotype. And the last thing we need is a map file, which we also know from our previous encounters with genotype data. And this is the classical one. First column, the chromosome ID. Second column, the SNP name. Third column is a Morgan position, but could be also a zero. And the fourth column is the base pair position. So back in R, I created a script file that actually creates these files from the final report. As I try to get better in the tidyverse style of R coding, I will use uh, the tidyverse approach here, but of course the base R is just as good. One thing that I wanted to highlight is that when you load the file with the base R, it actually replaces the spaces in the column names in the final report with a dot. And uh, in tidyverse, it basically just keep the and in tidyverse, it just basically keeps the spaces and the column names are between single quotation marks. But again, we will follow up with tidyverse here. I will show you two scenarios. The first one, when everything is available already in the final report itself. And the second one is when some of the columns, notably the SNP coordinates are missing. I'm also sorry to tell you that the second scenario when something is missing from the final report is way too common and therefore it is very good to know what to do in this situation. But let's go first with scenario one when everything is available. So as for the FAM file, so this is the file when there is one line per individual. So we start with the final report, keep just one line per individual and then add all the other stuff that we need. So we add the FID, which is the family ID. In this case, I have chosen B-Tau because for the Bostaurus, we are talking about cattle data. And also we denote the sires and the dams and the sex and the phenotype all as unknown. Then we reshuffle a little bit the columns so that they are in the right order and write them out in the FAM file. In this case, I've chosen the name Genomics Bootcamp. The largest part of the data is in the Elgen file. So this is the file that we have one line per one SNP per individual. And you remember, I told you that almost everything is already available in the final report itself. So basically we start with the final report, add again the family ID, and then select the columns that we need. 
A very neat property of the tidyverse select is that it also keeps the order as you mentioned them in the lines. So putting these column names in the order that we need them, they already appear in the Elgen file as such. Two things to highlight here so that of course I use the same family ID in the Elgen file as in the FAM file. And the other one is that I'm using the same basis of the name for the .elgen file as well. One additional note so that we are going for the AB format here, but of course you are free to choose any of the other two. So if you need a top format or the forward format, of course, then you select those alleles here. And the last thing is the map file. And in this file, we have one line for each SNP. So we start again with the final report, keep one line per SNP, add the column for Morgan positions. In this case, we put them all to zero. And then we select the columns that we need and write them out in the genomicsbootcamp.map file. After we have everything, we just use a single plink line to transform the Elgen files to a more well-known and frankly more useful pad and map files. As we talked about plink in length in other videos, I will just point out the main parts, namely that we use the dash dash L file to load the data also that the missing genotypes in this case are denoted by a dash. So we use a dash dash missing genotype dash here to account for this and that we don't have to account for this anymore. We change the missing genotypes to zero, which is a default in Plink with a dash dash output missing genotype. And with the recode, well, we create a pad and map files. And after we run this, we see that we have a pad and map files in our working directory with 10 cattle and 306 variants. This is just this little because this is just an example data. But of course, in reality, you will have all your animals and all your SNPs transformed in the classic pad and map files. And now for scenario two, which unfortunately is way too common. But here, basically, we use the same approach. We still do for the creation of FAM file, Elgen file, and MAP file, and we still transform these with Blink. The catch is that we need to be a little bit more inventive when it comes to replacing the missing values, because of course, if there are some columns missing from the final report, we still need to put there something because Blink actually needs them so it can function properly. As I mentioned, the most frequent case is when the SNP coordinates are missing. So basically, we need to put something else in into the map file. So we do basically the FAM file same as before, the Elgen file same as before. And in the map file, basically, we still keep one line per SNP. But then we put a zero value for the chromosome and also a zero value for a base pair position. These values are just the placeholders for now and serve us to change the Elgen files to the PED and MAP files. After you run these the very same way as before, then you will see that you have again 10 cattle and 306 variants in your working directory in the PED and MAP file. In this case, I added an underscore anon to highlight that something else needs to be done with these files so you can use them properly. And the next step that you need to do is update the map files with the correct chromosome and SNP positions. Usually you have files sent to you together with the final report, or if you are dealing with a standardized SNP chip, then you can find this information also online. How to do the update itself, it was already discussed and it's on the update genomic map positions with Blink on the Genomics Bootcamp channel that you are watching right now. Also, if you're not subscribed, now is the perfect opportunity to do so, so you don't miss any of the future awesome videos about genomics. As for today, I thank you for your attention, thank you for your time, and have a very nice rest of the day.